comes to client appreciation, I think we forget about the business side of it, the B2B side. And then what I've talked to a lot of agents about is just um, needing clarification of what a client appreciation event could be uh, and also not worrying about what it's not. Like a client appreciation event does not have to be an event for 80 to 100 people. And if you don't have max attendance, it's not a success. Um, you can do something very easily for four or five people. I think who those four or five people is probably the more important thing. So we'll jump all over the place a little bit today. My hope is at the end, we can kind of culminate it into a couple of action steps that I'll leave y'all with. And I've got a, a, a resource item that Cindy was nice enough to bring uh, that'll hopefully help you on your way to take some fiscal action after you leave today. Just remember with Hometown U, and most of y'all are veterans, with Hometown U, if you take no action after this, in my opinion, you may as well not even come to the class. Please keep coming to the classes. <laughs> but at the same time, right, like this is the easy stuff. You got here, and that's awesome. You planted the button seat, that's awesome. You take some notes, and that's even more awesome. But after this, if you don't go and really do anything with it, it's just a waste of everybody's time. So uh, what we'll encourage you to do is gonna be something that's very easy to do immediately and something that might help you long term. Uh, we're gonna call this social success seeking. Today we're gonna cover first the benefits, the benefits to you, the benefits to your clients, the benefits overall uh, in a business to business environment. Um, we're gonna talk next about the process, right? Like how, how do I even go about planning an event once I have an idea of what I want to do, what do I do from there? How do I make sure people are going to show up? Like, what gives me the best chance <coughs> of having the best event? And then we're going to talk a little bit about results. Uh, in terms of results, what I did is I, instead of just using maybe what TSG did or what I've done in the past, I went into hometown and I got a bunch of ideas from a lot of different agents that some of y'all maybe haven't even met. And we've got some incredible ideas. One of the best things about being a member of a firm that's <coughs> over 400 members strong is that there are good ideas floating around if you're floating around, right? So I hope to bring some of those to you today. And then of course, all this stuff is worthless without a little bit of action. So benefits, uh, first things first. Uh, what's a client appreciation event and, and why is it important? Uh, somebody take a stab at, at that for me. What's a, what's a client appreciation event first? Seems like it's pretty easy to answer, right? A way to say thank you to our clients. Laura, A plus. Thank you. Excellent student. But if we're not grateful, um, then we're missing the boat on what our business model is. If we don't stay top of mind with people, <laughs> find creative ways to do that, and stay consistently relevant, it's not their job to remember us. I have always had a hard time just dialing for dollars. Before I got into real estate, I worked for a company called Oakwood Homes and I sold trailers and modular housing. And the, the, the deal there was people came through the door and you essentially formed a paper database and you dialed for dollars to find out who was gonna buy the next one. You know, they come by on a Saturday, you call them for a month, you finally get them in. I discovered even then before I got into real estate that that just wasn't the best model for me. I loved talking to people. It wasn't the phone calls that was the problem. It was what I felt like I was forcing myself to, sit, to say, and I didn't feel like it was authentic. Even better, graduating from Longwood, having a couple of knucklehead fraternity brothers that will always kind of just break me off if that's what they feel like they need to do to me. They're like, dude, this is phony, this is fake. I partied with you for four years. I know this is not you. Are you trying to be somebody else? And I'm like, actually, no. I don't know if I can go and be somebody else for the rest of my life. And that's when I kind of learned a little bit through the Buffini system that you can reasonably party your way to success in real estate. You just have to do it the right way. So like, I like having some beers. Well, can I have beers with my clients? Well, half my database kind of likes beers. Okay, like we're onto something here, right? So then you just throw a big keg party. But I'm gonna help you have a little bit more uh, intention. Um, the main two reasons, I know we've got three here, but the main two reasons that I've been told that people don't host client appreciation events. Uh, first, it's the perceived expense. I'm not even gonna say the expense, it's the perceived expense, and then it's the perception that nobody's gonna come. It's a little deeper than that though, right? The root of that is you feel like nobody cares about you, nobody's gonna show up for your event, nobody's gonna support you unless they need something from you. That's not true. I can tell you right now that the majority of your clients love you, and if you do something that's relevant to them, they're gonna show up. They show up for the events, don't they? Kev, they show up to the events, Croco, Craig, they, they show up, right? 
big, the, the biggest part of this, though, is the blessing of the time period that we're in right now. And granted, I know COVID went out of style several years ago, and I'm glad that it did. The flip side, though, is that we, we're still riding the social wave from it. People were clammed up for a long, long, long time. Every now and again, you'll still see somebody with a mask on, and that's probably more the weird thing now. But people are getting back out. I was going to utilize, uh, since she was hanging out at the Kansas City game last weekend, like a Taylor Swift concert, for example. Like a hot rod, I know he gets as many tickets to those as possible. But a Taylor Swift concert, there are thousands of people. Like they're everywhere, on top of each other, all over each other, out being social. Uh, the Meadow Event Park, the concert series, people are out and about again. You go into the town of Ashland on a Friday night or a Saturday night, there's people walking around, right? So people are streaming to be social, and you guys run a business model that allows them to do that by being the host. So today I'm going to help you with ways to get past the fear that nobody's going to show up. And I'm going to give you some ways to get through the expense and keep that minimal. Uh, some of this stuff may be stuff you've heard before. The biggest thing though is what's in it for you and what's in it for your clients. Um, our mission statement is to guide and connect and to do it with gratitude. We guide people through the real estate process, right? Because we know a little bit more than they do, contrary to what they might think. We connect them with anybody that can help them in a way that I can't help them. And we stay grateful the whole time because without these people, we have nothing. And that's my personal philosophy on it. That's kind of how we came up with it. But I think about my clients all the time to the point where now, um, similar to you guys, when a database gets big enough, you start to notice small groups, social groups, common interest groups, uh, work groups, different groups. Well, the first thing you can do for those people is introduce them to each other. If this person does this, but this person doesn't know about it, congratulations, you're the connector. An easy way to do it, though, would be to plan an event around that. Um, I'm trying to think of what the the company was, I think it was Dominion, Dominion Energy. When you, you have a team, small team, large team, don't really matter, but let's say you've got four or five people that you find out work for Dominion Energy. Why wouldn't you do a Dominion Energy happy hour, right? Doesn't need to be big. And it helps them meet others like them and others in the community. My favorite piece is that it accents who you are. If you ever wonder if people think you're all about the transactions or just trying to collect a commission check, don't talk about it. Go show them, right? Like uh, create a lifestyle where real estate is ingrained in it, where people know what your identity is. Um, the best thing about a client appreciation event is that it does accent your identity. One of the best expressions of gratitude, uh, and then this one came to me as Lavender and I were talking about it. When it comes to our clients, absence does not make the heart grow fonder. They will, they, they will not forget about you, but you will not stay top of mind if you don't work to stay relevant. And it's not their job to remember you. So uh, this is a way for you to make phone calls potentially every month with ease, uh, with strategy, and being comfortable about it. Think about it as when people pick up the phone, they're actually happy to hear from you because they wonder what you might be calling about versus you thinking uh, that they're going to expect you to be like, hey, you know anybody that needs to buy or sell a home? Mm -hmm. Get that next slide. Right? So the, the process, right? The first thing you have to do is you have to decide if you want to go big versus small. Do I want to include my entire database or do I want to do a small group client appreciation event? Um, what we do, what I know a couple of teams do in forming those subgroups is we find a way to stay relevant on a monthly basis. My wife's an educator. She's been an educator in Hanover, I think for like 17 years, and she's been at several different schools. Because of her being how she is, uh, I'm very lucky to have an impact at those schools because I, I think, because they don't know me and they really like her. So I, I get to ride that way, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But now we're doing a drawing every month for educators, right? I call all the educators, let them know we're doing it. I ask them if they know about anybody that wants to be a part of it. I do the drawing, I video the drawing. It's a, it's a production, right? But really it's for them. And it's, it's two $25 Amazon cards. It's not uh, anything crazy. But the first thing you've got to do is you've got to decide, okay, what do I feel like I can conquer? Do I feel like a big event is gonna overwhelm me and make me stressed out? If the, the vibes are bad on that, bury that right, right from the jump and try to figure out, okay, well, what about a small batch? 
what about a small group that I can pick six to eight people and do something with them? I'm gonna skip this real quick. But once you get past here, you're going down here and you're picking a theme and a location. Cindy's gonna to talk to you at the end about Oakland. Most of you know about Oakland, but when it comes to hometown, I think we forget that Oakland is something that uh, very few, if any, other firms can offer you. A, a beautiful venue that everybody in Hanover knows about that's at your disposal if, if it's not already rented out. Cindy will tell you more about that, right? So pick, pick first, big or small, and then pick a theme. What are you gonna do? I've told this story to some of you before, but I feel like uh, stories sell uh, kind of like, um, and they let you know that, that you're not alone. Somebody has been there before. I did my, my very first one right after I took, um, I think it was 100 Days to Greatness in those days. And it was, it was required by the Feeney that you did a business mixer or a client appreciation event. And I just tried to follow that system to a T. I did mine at Capitol Ale House and I did it in the game room. They're, they don't charge you anything for that. Um, they told me as long as I could keep other people out, it would be like my private room. And so I planned the event, I made the calls. I think I had like 24 RSVPs. I felt pretty good about it. And then similar to class today, like 15, 20 minutes before the event, it's a very sparse room. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. I'm kind of thinking everybody told me yes, but when it came time to pony up, they kind of floundered out. Get to about five minutes before the event, and not much has changed. I think I had like two homeboys there. And yeah, they're business people, but they're really just homeboys that came for a couple beers and uh, to support me for the day. And so I went into the, the bathroom to kind of like, kind of get my mind right, uh, chill out for a minute. And, and like all bullshit aside, I had myself a good cry in the bathroom because I got, I got like $300 into this event. I've been spending a week trying to get a hold of people and there's nobody in there but the same two homeboys that I'm probably gonna hang out with this weekend. I went out and Rodney was standing at, uh, what do you call it, the hostess podium or whatever, whatever it is. And it was something to the effect of like, hey man, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I, I just had myself a good cry in the bathroom. I thought I was planning a good event. But Rodney, I'll be honest with you, this is crap. He's like, well, I'm not sure what you're talking about. You need to go in there and take care of your people. And I go in there and there's like 15 people there, right? So it, it um, don't speculate, investigate. Don't get too wrapped up in the process. Stick to the process, and, and I'm gonna give you that here in a few minutes. But, but take it from me. If you have a good process, you make the contacts, and you have a good relationship with these people, they're gonna be there. So the best advice I can give you on that is please stop worrying after that. You're, you're not, um, who is the lady like, call me now for your free reading. Y'all like, are not Miss Cleo, right? Y'all are, are not Miss Cleo. So don't predict the future or don't even try. I don't even actually think she was that good at that. <laughs> Flipping it around a little bit, right? Like, so that's more, um, that's more of me uh, reaching out to people I know in the beginning. Uh, some people were clients, some people were business owners. About a year after that though, I realized that I had, I had two different opportunities that could be vehicles moving at the same time. I could do a client appreciation event one month, I could do a business mixture the next month. And the only thing I'm gonna tell you about your business mixture is I know most of you have business affiliates right now and it's time to utilize those resources. They may not send you referrals, and this is just my personal opinion, it's okay if y'all disagree. I do not believe that a business affiliate's um, benefit to us is doing a good job. Like, if they hire us, if they refer business to us, the minimum standard is doing a good job, right? So when it comes to your affiliates, it's, again, my opinion that they need to be doing something extra. They need to be sending you business or they need to be supporting your business. And so the first thing is leaning on them for sponsorship. Has anybody in here ever reached out to a business affiliate that they've worked with regularly and asked for money? Uh, just, yeah, show of hands is cool. So, like, of those hands, <clears throat> when you made those calls, was it, a, like, a problem? Okay, I'm gonna lean on you, Big D, because I, I don't. You're like doing the yeah, yeah. the gangster. Well, one. some it just depends how much money you're asking, right? Sometimes you're like you're asking for like 500, 700 good bucks, but they only, you know, some of them will only run into the 250. Sure, but some pies better than no pie. Absolutely. Yeah. And at, at the end of the day, a business that will fork over 100 bucks, 250 or something towards the event, high five. You know what I mean? 
I've, I've never called anybody, and, and uh, I, I know, my wife tells me all the time, I'm not special, right? Like, so I know that picking up the phone and asking for it is a hard concept. That's the hardest thing about it. And you have like six or eight people after the class that you can lean on and be like, hey, when you did it, how did it go, blah, 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 whatever you need to do to make yourself feel better about it. But if you're spending your own money on your events, think of it as wasting business funds. What could you do with that 500 to a thousand dollars where you've been supporting this guy all year or for two years or three years and really um not only could he help you with the financial side of it but he can actually have a presence he or she could have a presence there uh, and he could be part of your event when you plan a business make sure the only thing i was going to talk to you specifically about there is the format that we devised so uh, if you run a, a 212 group a bni group or something this is actually really easy because you have a a pond to fish in already. But I used to have everybody come into a venue. We did them, we did them at the, like the Hoff down in the city. Uh, we did them at a gym one time. I encourage you to work within your, your B2B database to try to find the venue at one of their businesses. I would create, an, uh, not an itinerary, but kind of like a, a loose way for them to understand that there was gonna be some structure and it just wasn't a big happy hour. And then literally, I would make everybody line up around the room like old sixth grade dance or something, and we would do intro hour. Everybody for just one minute would be like, I'm Larry, I work my hometown realty, I run a small team there, appreciate y'all coming out today, keep me in mind for your buyer, seller, referral, whatever. And everybody goes around the room. What I found after that though is by just doing that critical piece, after that, this guy now goes over to this lady and they start talking. They didn't even know who each other was, right? So. Now we're playing connector. Now I also though, I have a sheet to give them with everybody's contact info so that afterwards they can follow up. And please believe I'm using that same sheet to follow up to see if they've made contacts, to see what kind of success stories we, we had that day, take pictures at the event. Uh, I included two drinks, typically at these mixers, man, like if, if it's uh, open bar, things can get out of hand, so you, you, know, you gotta be careful there. Um, but at the end of the day, we had events where we would have, I would say maybe 30 to 40 business professionals and the backlash of that was so positive in terms of incoming phone calls. How many of those types of events have you been to? Who's been to a business mixer like that before? I was, I, I did, I, I like the child story. So, so do something a little different but don't neglect your B2B environment. Start maybe trying to think about your B2B environment just like you're thinking about your client appreciation program or your general real estate database. And the, the biggest thing here is believe it or not, it's not the event itself. That's the most important thing. I feel like all of us are like, it's gotta be perfect. It's gotta be the best event or I'm letting everybody down. I'm not saying it doesn't matter at all. I'm just saying it matters very little. It matters what you do up to the event and more importantly, what you do after the event. So then we got the promotional timeline. I realize that this is nerdy, and I realize that it's very detailed, but I'm telling you down to a T that this is pretty close to the best way that it works for us, right? It's a timeline that allows for consistent care and direct contacts. It ensures peak attendance strictly by repetition. It prevents last minute mishaps. We're in the age of cowards. Like we are in the age of like, I stubbed my toe and so I just kind of retired for three days. Like, well, you told this person you were gonna do this, this person you were gonna do this, and this person you were gonna do this. But none of them are following up with them. There's no pressure to perform or anything like that. Kind of like, like Craig did you, Harry. Yeah, now that I think about it. <laughs> so, so in this case, it's like, okay, well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be aimlessly calling people and I wanna know when I get close to my event I want to have a, a general idea of who's going to show up. I even want to know the people that I feel like are a little bit flaky based on the conversations I've had. So two weeks in advance, we start firming up all of the details, where it's going to be, venue, date, time, theme, and then we work backwards. So where are we at? At two weeks out, we're... I think we need to tweak this a little bit. 
but we're not we're no longer emailing and calling people 21 days out uh, it's fine if you do it this way what i've identified is that's actually too much time for people in their social calendars and stuff so we typically start our promo timeline right at about two weeks and the first thing we do is we send out a general save the date sounds stupid like well, how am i going to send a save the date it's the most passive way to do it it's just a foundation like the save the date is just the foundation for the conversations to come after that hey did you get to save the date about the event no okay who cares let me tell you a little bit about it today maybe you can make it right so you, we get that two weeks out um from there we do it says call and email invites i'd like to cross through and email typically once the save the day goes out from there we're trying to get on the phone to see what the initial numbers are looking like and then as you go along there's two to three checkpoints over the next uh let's say 10 to 14 business days where you're either calling or emailing. And you're gonna say, okay, well, that's a lot. That's kind of annoying. First off, I've never had a client ever tell me that. I've heard more, thank you for the reminders. Like I got a lot going on right now, this happened. Thanks for reminding me, we can't wait to be there. Um, but these are easy calls to log, right? So as realtors, regardless of what anybody says, we need to be on the phone or we need to be in front of people and there's not an easier way to do it than this. So you send a, a reminder, make the call, send a reminder email three to four days after that. You're making calls to follow those up. And then literally the day or two days before your event, you're making a final round of calls before any serious funds are being spent. So the number that you have captured is, is decently accurate. What, I, what we try to do, it doesn't work with every event though, is we try to slide a pop by in before the event mostly because depending on the size of the event, you don't know that you're gonna be able to spend quality time <coughs> when that event shows up. Like uh, Flying Squirrels game, if you have like 100, 200, 300 people coming and we're sitting in, in seats, Popeyes are pretty valuable there because I'm gonna get a lot more face time with them during the Popeyes than I am at the actual event. A larger event, I typically try to pick 10 or 15 people that I wanna to talk to that night that I, that I know have got something going on. So think about it, if I've got to make you know, 50 pop buys a couple of days before the event, how many conversations am I having? Um, how much rapport am I building before the actual event? And then we talked about this RSVP call right before the event. At the party, make sure you connect with anybody you invited. Take pictures, take a lot of pictures, but now get permission that it's okay to put these pictures out where you're gonna put them I don't come from a family that really has a problem with any of that stuff, but to each their own, and I know you gotta kind of respect that stuff too. So just make sure, like, especially if you're putting pictures of people's kids and stuff up out there, that uh, you actually have the blessing. Um, make sure that they're taken care of and happy. I think people forget that, like, this is not your party, it's their party. If you need to be a server, <coughs> serve. If you need to go get beers, go get beers, right? Do you want them to think about somebody that sits around and watches all the work get done, or do you want them to think about think of you as somebody that jumps in the trenches and gets stuff done when that's what it takes? These these are all messages any way you look at them. And then, although client appreciation events have come around a lot more, I think a lot more realtors are doing them than maybe we're doing them 10 years ago. Hometown was built on this stuff. Hometown was built on cookouts, uh, happy hours, events. I mean, that's all that I remember from the early days. And I think one thing we do is we we show them um, that we are there with them after the sale. Long after we cash the check, we're inviting you to stuff. We love spending time with you. It's, it's Again, it's part of that overall image. Once you finish up, remember I told you after the event is the most important part, right? So I've got some pictures of stuff to put on social media. I hopefully have some pictures that I might even be able to frame five by sevens and do some pop buys, right? Like a picture of, of the, the husband, the wife, and the kids, or, or a, a couple that's dating or something like that. These are incredible pop by gifts that will occupy their mind space. And I think that's a big part of our business. Obviously, thank you notes and calls to everybody that comes. I think you should write notes and make calls to the people that don't come to first, make them feel bad and guilty. And hopefully, second to let them know about what you got coming up next. Sorry, you can make it to this one. We got this coming up soon. Hope you can make it to that. 
the results. Okay, so this is this is from I, I think this was last year. Yeah. This is from the fire. Well, we couldn't do it this year because we had like a tornado, hurricane, tsunami, um, and we had to fall out of there pretty quick. Um, but what you'll find is that if you give people the experience, they kind of start uh, creating an audience for you. So many people now want to let people know what they're doing so their lives look as cool as possible and everybody can kind of get jealous of it. You know what I mean? So give them a reason to do that. But don't hesitate to take some pictures and put it on, on your social media outlets. The reason I tell you to do that is not to draw attention to yourself like a look at me, more of, hey, I want people to know how I run my business, and if I don't do this kind of stuff, how are they going to know otherwise, right? So sometimes getting stuff front and center is not the end of the world. Uh, I think what we got at the bottom, well, I, I, I wouldn't thank myself. <laughs> uh, that would be kind of tacky. But uh, <laughs> you, you have people that are going to put testimonials. These are things that you can take throughout the year. Uh, depending on what the wording, you can incorporate those into your marketing and stuff like that. Part of our buyer-seller packets covers client appreciation, so of course we're going to have some testimonials from clients in there. Oh, uh, here we go. Here's the juicy stuff. Speaking of juicy, look at this guy. Actually, I'm going to get weird for a minute here. I want you guys to really, really see this guy. Who is that? Anybody? Hot Rod. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's Big Z. Big Z. And I would love to say that I had that much courage. I'm like, I'm, I'm this guy right here. <laughs> Super plain. Big Z, tell them a little bit about what you did. I, I asked you to do that because I think it's incredible. And I know, I know for you, man, like, you have, you've leveled up, leveled up, leveled up, leveled up, not just in terms of business, but client appreciation events and kind of the identity. Just a little bit about that again. Well, first of all, um, I love parties. So it's just in one way, just to have fun while having fun. And then uh, I've noticed too that everyone loves tacos. So I added that in there. And so so started off with just doing taco fiestas. So every May I do a taco fiesta and every uh, October I do another one. And you had Rico's, did Rico's, Rico's came yeah. out? So did they, they have like a food truck or did they have like a So they have their own spread. So like I've re I realized that cooking burgers, making hot dogs, yes, it was cheap in the beginning, but it was, I didn't interact with my people. And that was a problem I was having. I was always at the grill, but not talking to my people. So yes, I invested a little bit more to food, but that's why you get your sponsorships with business owners and all that good stuff. They can help you with the cost of it. But even then, I was able to work the crowd and talk, take pictures, take selfies, all that good stuff. That, that's, um, I'm glad you brought that up. And I, I, I've been the guy at the grill too. And they only come to you when they want food. They only want food, right? Finish that on you after that, man. Um, just say, I need somebody to talk to. Um, what, tell, me about the, uh, tell me about the mask, the costume and stuff. Natural Libra? <laughs> Big Natural Libra guy. I just want to make sure you an experience with the clients, you know what I mean? And then it's getting to the point where we actually just sent out the next invite for October. And about two weeks ago, I had two clients reach out to me and like, are we still good for October? And they already know that it's happening. It's got an identity. They have exactly right. So they already know what's happening. <laughs> one, one event can create an identity. One event can create something that people are excited to come to next year. And don't assume that these people have all kinds of fun stuff to do. Some of the things that y'all offer them are going to be some of the most fun things they do in the year. And I know that might seem kind of tough, right? But everybody's not like us. You know what I mean? This kind of stuff is great because <coughs> I think it occupies more mind space. Like this, this is okay, right? Like that's my oldest son. Yeah, great. It makes me look tall and, and <laughs> somebody does. You know what I mean? But this is going to capture more of that mind space, right? This is going to look good. And when I send the save the date out for the next one, you know what I mean? Like it, it um, pushing yourself to go further, pushing yourself to put a mask on, a cape on, and stuff like that. I promise you, it's going to produce more positive results than being too scared to do those things. And that's what holds us back, right? We don't want, like, I'll admit it for myself. It's going to take a lot for me to get me in like a Jimmy Superfly snooker uh, mask and a, and a cape and stuff. But, but that's more on me, where Big Z's got the courage to do it, now he's got an identity around his event. Um, some of the other things, 
that people have, you see, I, I've got it laid out over here. A knight of the diamond is easy. Uh, lab would, would beg to differ. I say it's easy because they have some ambassadors and some representatives there to help you wade through it all and, and, and kind of help you the night of. Sports watch parties, though, I think is something to slow down and talk about more in a small batch environment. Um, we're in NCAA season, we're in NFL season right now. College basketball season is just as relevant to a lot of people as <laughs> football season is. But these are perfect opportunities for you to call not your traditional five homeboys that you're probably going to go to B-dubs and watch football with anyway. But like, uh, who are the Skins fans? Who are the Bucks fans, right? Like, think about your database. You go through there and organize some parties. And I gave you that sheet. I doubt that any of this stuff will total uh, under $100 anymore. But at the, the same time, uh, something that Hometown Trader wants upon a time to show you, hey, this is not rocket science, and it doesn't have to be swanky. Go spend $100, $150, bucks, post somebody to watch the games at your house on Sunday. Congratulations. You just had a client appreciation event, right? And when you do something like that, you knock your training wheels off pretty quick because you realize it's nothing to be scared of, whether it's six people or, or 60 people. Uh, outdoor movie night, that is a concept that we are rolling out because we think it's incredible. Uh, we took a stab at it not long ago. I had a really, really good turnout, ended up kind of converting it to a games night uh, because between me and you guys, test that shit out early and, and like look at your sunlight and the glares and stuff or you might be watching pretty dim movies. <laughs> and it, it doesn't always go well, but I feel like uh, the event for us that night was still a success. Uh, Easter egg hunt, Oak Lawn is wicked good for that. But if you live in a subdivision and you're not the social director for your subdivision right now, you, you need to up your game. I was the social director for Cedar Lee until we moved out of there. And I planned every social event for the neighborhood because I knew it put me front and center. And let me tell you, I hate stuffing Easter eggs. I'm not crafty. I'm like making Halloween games and crap for the kids. I hate all that stuff. But for a chance to get in front of my, my neighborhood, for a chance for them to start seeing me as a neighbor and a realtor, what was I willing to do? Um, I, I haven't lived in Cedar Lee for almost three years now. I've still sold houses, at least one house in the neighborhood every year since we moved out. So there is a, a trail of this stuff behind. Uh, pot party, uh, that'll be coming up for a lot of people uh, here in a couple months. Fall festival, we've got our fall festival coming up at the Hanover Vegetable Farm next month. Um, always a good time. Uh, Noah, um, Noah Tucker actually did not a movie showing, but he was on House Hunters. So he did a House Hunters watch party at the Bird Theater, and apparently it was like 200 people there that came to it. Uh, we did a showing of Shrek at the Bird Theater. It's not nearly as expensive as you thought. The bird's pretty rough, but still somehow still pretty popular. Um, so it's not not a bad idea. They got help there for you too. Uh, River City Roll Happy Hour, probably a little bit more pricey, but again, uh, name brand place that people are going to recognize. Good chance to get some people from the city to an event too. Uh, we talked about we talked about B two Bs, but I think contractor happy hours are a good I idea too. If you have like your power team, it's probably not a bad idea to meet with them once a month or somewhere around there just to download, see where everybody's at. Happy hour typically softens everybody up a little bit. Two three drinks uh, typically soften people up a little. Golf tournaments, a little bit more to uh, plan like a, a, a real, real golf tournament, you know, like a hunting hawk classic or something. But what do y'all call y'all, Kevin? Is it a birds and brews? Birds and brews, mm -hmm. right? And on average, like 20 dudes. 24, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. So uh, six foursomes, uh, what they do, which I think is incredible, they, they have captains. So you captain a foursome, but you pick your foursome. So the idea there is you can potentially get introduced to three strangers in the B2B world or the general world from that team captain. Like, I, I think that one layer of it is, is pretty genius. But what are you doing? You're playing golf all day, right? Like, don't get it twisted. That's not that hard. You're planning a golf event um, and, and still calling it business. Hosting housewarming parties. This was like a big buffini thing in the very beginning. It was like after you close a deal, like, you need to be on them. I couldn't get people to plan housewarming parties to save my life. Has, has anybody had success getting people to plan house in the park? I used to tell them, I'll bring the keg or the food. If you tell me either of those things, you're welcome at my house. Like, all of y'all. If you bring food or a keg, you can come to my house. Anyhow. And people weren't with it, though. Um, but if you do, um, 
go gangster with it. Tell them that you'll send their Save the Dates out. Like, you'll do all of the legwork for the event. All they really need to do is show up at their own house, by the way, for the time of the party, and you got everything else covered. The reason I say you do all that stuff is because that puts you in a really, really good position at the party to connect with people because they kind of know a little bit about you, who you are, and stuff like that. I mean, you just, you got to take it from there. Uh, potluck friends, Friendsgiving. Uh, Oakland's uh, a good, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a stab at doing that this year. Oakland's great event for that. Uh, gay nights, Cinco de Mayo, uh, Top Refers event. How do you do that? What kind of events do you host on the Top Refers event? Like, what do you do on that? The only thing that we've ever done is at the end of the year, I, in the early years, we did like a big Christmas party, kind of just a big like free for all. And then we started scaling that back to kind of being like, okay, well, who are our top supporters? Uh, one year we did something at Cooper's Hall. It was like, it was only 20 of us, but they have like a little private room there. And as long as you hit the minimum, they don't really care what you, I don't want to say they don't care what you do, but like they kind of will, will leave that to you. And then one year, once we realized that Hondo's had kind of like come down from astronomical prices on everything, we partnered with Hondo's and did, um, I think like, our six top affiliates and our eight top referrers for the year. So it's never a big deal, but but you lay it on thick. Typically you have like a small gift for them and you let them know like what they represented to your business and how hopeful you are to kind of keep that rolling with them. But it, those are those are big events and when I look back, it doesn't have to be that way. It's, it's the gesture. It, it could be at your house, you know what I mean? Like it could be at Oak Lawn. We did, we did yeah, Christmas we did, party at Oak Lawn. Yeah, we had one at Oak Lawn and we had it catered, but I mean, we don't even have to have fancy catering, but it catered and we had like 10 o'clock and the table set, so it was nice that then we had like a moment where we could thank everyone and stuff like that. In the back room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had um, like bartenders, it was my dad's like best friend's wife, good bartender, so it was it, it, um, it can be, it can be anything, but if, if you're not doing something, I guess the short of it is, hey, if you're not doing something for those top referrals, what really makes them different than the others, right? So it doesn't matter what it is, uh, but the, the gestures, they don't get forgotten. And remember, like, a top referrer is already a giver. They're already a giver. You're just trying to encourage them and, and show gratitude to them to keep them locked into who they already are, you know? Um, so now we get to something that have kind of come from others. Uh, Stoney does... Stoney does a killer crab feast every year. He told me this year they actually ran out of crabs. Like, so I know crabs are not cheap. I got some for my mom for her birthday, and I was blown away by how much they cost. So if you do a crab uh, fest or a feast, um, get lots of sponsors. Fancy business business mixer. Uh, I've done one of these. Benjamin does a lot of these. Uh, the fancy biscuit, for example, and shindigs is more of a household name like City of Richmond. Um, a lot of people know about it, but this is a chance where uh, Benjamin knew Will from years back. I think they might have even played like Blue Star football together or something. Well, Will is one of the lead chefs and a partner with uh, Shindigs and the Fancy Biscuit, right? So we're taking care of, Ben's taking care of his client by providing a venue for local business owners to come to, kind of like the completion of Three Ahead of Mine. Supporting Will, having these guys come out, and I mean the Fancy Biscuits, they are really Ladies one night, I got to be a part of that earlier in this year. If, if you don't do, I don't know how to say this the right way. Like, so, like the ladies, y'all can fight me after the class if you want to. Um, if you're not doing something specifically for the ladies in your database, like you're, you're missing like such a wicked opportunity. Like whether it's one night or something different, plan something because I had never, my ears had never hurt so bad, but I had never been to an event where what are you saying, Larry? I'm saying they were loud. <laughs> but they were loud because they were having fun. They were chopping it up. They were meeting people. They were talking. Cab was pouring. Full pours. Making Nate Smith look bad all night. You know what I mean? What I'm saying, though, is they're going to hang out anyway. Why, why wouldn't you give them something and be the source for it? And it doesn't matter if you're a dude. You can plan an event strictly for ladies. It's okay. Like, and, and maybe vice versa. I don't know what y'all are planning for dudes. It'll probably be like a big beers and bros. Gross, gross event. Um, oyster roast, some of the crafties, right? Like, um, we got a buddy that owns Tri River Seafood in West Point. 
Um, so if you, know, you need something like that, um, you can go locally, you can get everything that you need. Again, oysters, uh, crabs and stuff, that's probably gonna be a little bit on the higher end. That's probably something you wanna do <coughs> once you, you really got things rolling. Happy Hours Local Brewery, that's, that is so easy. Um, some town first agents used to do happy hours right across the street at Sedona. And I remember we probably have like 15, 20, 25 hometown agents at every one of them, right? Just plan a happy hour, see who will come to it. Wine tasting party, there's a lot of ladies that will come to your house or your um, place of business now and do those. Another easy thing, that's a lot less expensive than you think it would be. Most of the time they're willing to do it provided they know that some of the people that are coming will actually purchase some wine. So if you get some winos out, I mean, you know they're gonna buy some wine and you can kind of uh, potentially do that at low to no cost. Uh, chili cook-off, got that on there because that, that's coming up soon, right? Football season, chili season and all that stuff. I have found that like people think chili cook-offs are cool. I, I don't really do chili, like I don't, I don't, I eat it, I don't make it though. So I'm not like personally down with the chili cook-off, but in a neighborhood, it's a really, really good type of event to have. Taco Fiesta, we already talked about that. What are driveway drinks, Big D? Uh, it's when you uh, invite your neighborhood to come out to your driveway and start drinking. <laughs> I thought that was right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. All right. So even client appreciation can be inviting people to your driveway and drinking. All right. Let's go. I thought this was genius. This came from Pam. What? Came from Pam Lawrence. Well, I, yeah. I love Pam because. Like she has made a name for herself on Lake Anna and she has such cool ways that she does it. Like, I don't, I, my vehicle's not even that cool. Pam takes like clients out in a boat to look at waterfront properties and stuff like that. But what she does is she embeds herself in the community. So Lake she's Caroline? Like, hmm? Lake Caroline? Is she Lake Caroline? Oh, yeah. I thought she was Lake Caroline. Lake Anna. Lake Anna. Lake Anna. Lake Anna. Same, Lake thing, right? Same thing. Thank you, Dave. I'm so down here. The gist of it, though, is that Pam has created a, a weekly lifestyle that puts her in different positions in the community, and she never goes empty-handed. And so everyone knows she sells real estate, and she sells plenty of it, but she's never knocking anybody over the head. And I think that's impressive. So she, she goes into firehouses, whether it's like breakfast or lunch, she knows what's going on with local nonprofits, right? Like, so she doesn't aimlessly support them. She actually like knows what's going on and finds support for them in addition to getting her support. Uh, I'm a huge fan of being in the schools because they give you every opportunity to jump in there and make a name for yourself. She's the same way. But I thought it was cool that she has the maintenance crews and the HOA office clerks. <laughs> So if I got a problem with an HOA doc or a packet or something like that, I'm not calling like, what's this guy's name? You know, like Joe S. I'm calling Tina, who I kicked it with last week because I stopped by to bring her some bagels or something like that. You know, I think uh, what Pam helped me understand is that like when you make this kind of stuff a lifestyle, it actually takes care of a lot of the problems that you feel like you have as a real. Man, I don't have the energy to pick up the phone today. Okay, then don't go pick up Panera. Go to the local firehouse. Ideally, you would want to know somebody there, right? Like, don't just <laughs> show up. But, like, go out there and be a, a, a person of the people, right? On that particular day, maybe dialing for dollars is not what you have to do. But you got to do something. Because you do nothing long enough. That's what you're going to end up with. And I have no idea what house party on Lake Anna means, but I'm pretty sure that was Pam's, too. And I'm pretty sure it had something to do with partying on the lake. It was, like, fire pit, roasting marshmallows. She's probably got a pretty, pretty sweet property too. But if I wanna, if I wanna catch certain fish, I've got to go where the fish are. And I can't complain about not catching tuna when I'm fishing over here for spotting croaker, right? Like you, you have to adjust the bait. The line needs to go in the water in a completely different place. You might not even be in the right pond. You know what I mean? But you need to find one that you can be in that's gonna give you the results you're looking for. These are things that have kind of come along. They're extra expense items, but they're a chance to partner with somebody. And these are easy things for someone else to pay for. Keep that in mind first. Someone else should be paying for these. 
bounce houses, I don't know, go buy a solo stove, or I'll loan you mine. Fire pit, uh, DJ Brian, if you, if you need them. Food and food trucks, this was such a blessing. When food trucks came along, changed the game. Like no more, no more standing in front of the grill. They'd be, we're calling in a food truck. Um, drinks, I think what, I think what I heard y'all did at the baseball game is like the first 100 or 150 beers are free courtesy of Rock Creek Innovations or something like that. So yeah, we got 100, 150 free beers. I did not tell you I was buying your alcohol after that. I told you get there and drink while you can and you know it's, it's sponsored by somebody else in the community. Yard games, um, what did we have out there for a movie night? Um, Connect Four. Connect Four is the jam. Kids love it. What else do we have? The life-size board games. They had like a it's like life-size uh, life tic-tac-toe or something like that. Uh, lawn games equal entertainment for the kids. Mm -hmm. Entertainment for the kids equals conversations with the adults, right? If, if I'm at an event and I gotta chase, thank God I don't have to chase my kids around anymore, but I remember when they were at the age where all I could do is kind of like just follow them around and make sure they didn't do anything stupid. Like, if they're entertained, the parents are social, they're looking for something to do. They're gonna be a lot more open-minded to you talking to them about whatever versus if their mind is 75% trying to keep an eye on their kid, 25% trying to listen to whatever you're saying, right? 100%. Um, tents and a face painter. Dude, I got like I got like four 10 by 10 tents. So if anybody ever wants one, like call me. You, you gotta come to my house, you gotta get out of my garage, but you're welcome to use it. And then a face painter. Again, remember child occupancy. I know that sounds it sounds kind of like institutionalized, but <laughs> you want to occupy the children, you want them to be happy so that the parents are happy and you actually get some time to chop it up with them. Is this helpful? I know it's uh, some of it's a little dry. I'm trying to kind of <laughs> not be dry, um, but it's, it's, uh, it's absolutely necessary to kind of go through some of this stuff. And really the only thing from here, Cindy's gonna tell you all about um, not just about the benefits of Oaklawn, but how to really operate the system the right way. Oaklawn is not something that is, uh, should be thought of as vacant. It should be thought of as booked. And if you think of it as booked, that's gonna make you plan and get on the schedule sooner than later. If you do that, what'll happen is you have less of a chance of letdown. You have less of a chance of Cindy being like, in her mind, she's like, well, you hit me up three weeks before you wanna do an event course it's booked but really it's like you have an opportunity to lay stuff out and be organized if you do it now if you wait until some cool concepts come to you and then you try to throw it together it's not going to be the same trust me I, I have been that guy many many times and I'm telling you with a plan it's going to go a lot better the first action step for each of you individually or if you're on a team as a team is to host a 2023 event so host an event by the end of the year. Plan it, implement it, finish it by the end of the year. Um, Aaron, will you tell me, you have an event? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yep, it's at Oakland actually. At Oakland. Mm -hmm. Two for two so far. Would you mind telling us? Not oh. at all. Um, my, how much, I'll, I'll be quick. My approach was slightly different than yours. I actually called people way in advance because in the past I've had people tell me, oh, kids events, you know, they, they take up all of our time. So. I called every single person in my COI and I was like, hey, I know you've got kids. I want you to put it on your calendar now. Sent out the events a few weeks or the invites a few weeks later, followed up with another round of phone calls. And I have actually sent out two emails and I will send out one tomorrow. See you tonight. Because mm -hmm. the last one I sent was on Monday and it was like, here are some parking reminders. Here are some inclement weather information. Um, I actually went to Five Below and I bought a ton of balls and a bat with a ball so that the kids could have stuff outside. There's cornhole boards at Oaklawn that I'm planning on setting out. Um, normally I do barbecue. This year is a little different for me just personally. So I, cheese boards are a love language for me. So I am making an entire eight or a banquet table covered in a cheese board. So I want everybody, and actually one of my clients is making cake and cupcakes. 
Um, the winery that I have for sale is, uh, he, he, I did pay for it, but he gave me two cases of wine for 200 bucks. So that's 24 bottles of wine for 200 bucks. So that was a deal. Um, but I tried to bring in clients and vendors in different ways. And I always encourage people like, Hey, if you're a business owner, please use this as a networking event. Come and talk about your own business. I want you to make new friends, find new clients for yourself. Um, I invited about 450 people and I'm expecting about a hundred to be there. Hopefully that would be, and this is my third year doing it. And every year it gets a little bit bigger. I think last year I had about 60 people come through throughout the night. Um, but tomorrow I'll be there all day at Oaklawn. And if anybody here wants to come and check it out, either you come and talk to me tomorrow while I'm setting up, or you can come during the event. It's from five until eight. Just come and see what I do. Um, I tried to do things really like on the cheap this year. Like I bought a bunch of balloons. We have a helium tank at Oakland, So I'm going to set up like a photo station where families can come take photos with the backdrop of whatever. I'll figure that out tomorrow. Um, and then I've just got like centerpieces that I'm putting on tables. It's nothing huge, but it's really just like the atmosphere and the relationship building that I want people to enjoy. Absolutely. But I try and have something for everyone. Um, and hopefully, I just try and tell people it's a good time. This is my thank you for being a part of my business. And I always try and reinforce that, not only in my follow-up phone calls, but also my emails that I send as well. It, uh, one thing, to, to two things pop out. First is getting ahead of the promo timeline only helps you make more contacts. That's never a bad thing, right? Especially provided you're saying the right things. One thing I forgot today, and I, I feel bad for forgetting this, this year what we've done a lot is uh, uh, video text. So we, we slid video text in as a layer, not a substitute for another item, but instead of sending a text, uh, it might be like text, call, video text. And that video text might be like my final touch point, kind of like seeing you tonight. Uh, some of this stuff might not make sense to you, but like the human mind is pretty amazing. And if you get a video of me the day of the event, you can see my face, you can hear my tone. And essentially I'm like, see you tonight. You know what I mean? Like the chances are, of you floundering at that point, it's more reason than excuse. You might not come, but the chances are you're not going to come for some lame excuse. You're going to come because when I come to you and I was like, where were you? You told me seven times you're going to be there. Like, this came up in my life. Right now. During this meeting, I've had two people RSVP yes. So, and they should have done that weeks ago, but I mean, still, they're, they're still reaching out to me because I'm doing <coughs> reliable correspondence, yeah, so it know. helps. You love them for who they are. You don't hate them for who they're not, right? right? Like they're not sitting around thinking about us all day, every day. And if we start thinking that we're lost, we, we got to get past that. It, it's actually the opposite. All right. So host one 2023 event. Show of hands. Does everybody feel like they can do that by the end of the year? That was a solid show of hands. All right. <laughs> all right. So take it a step further then and set your 2024 marketing calendar. And Thanks to Cindy and Benjamin. Uh, so I'm going to help you do it. So no matter what you decide. Whether you're playing a business mixer, client appreciation event, Popeye campaign, or anything, this is going to lay out the months for you, the events for you, and it literally is a fill-in-the-blank process. So why on God's green earth would we set a 2024 marketing calendar in September of 2023 or October of 2023? Why? Because you want to get to Oakland, you better do it now. That's right. Definitely. <laughs> definitely one reason. We got an email yesterday. But being proactive. Is the best. We got an email from our team in Lucy yesterday. It said tomorrow's event. Tomorrow's meeting is going to cause a lot of people to call for booking Oakland. Let me know now, May 2nd, 2024 is our team to that. So she yeah. booked it yesterday. <laughs> like it better, maybe. It's not Lucy's first rodeo by far. Um, I'm going to say, th th those are true, 100% true. I'm going to say that it's going to give you peace of mind about next year. And what I mean by that is, instead of being like everybody else, who am I going to call this week or what am I going to say or how am I going to say this differently than I said it last time? Lay out a marketing calendar now that you love, probably will enjoy, but will make your lead generation and prospecting like a no-brainer. 
I'm, I'm working around all of these events. I don't even know when I'm really going to have time to do quote unquote dialing for dollars because I've given my business an identity and that's kind of where I'm at every month. So take this with you and try to fill it out by the end of October. Have it filled out by the end of October if you can. Reserve your venues, make your deposits, do the stuff that you need to do. But what I hope this will do is I hope it'll start having you look at your business affiliates a little differently, start asking more favor because you deserve it, and like plan some events for next year that going into next year, they hype you up, they give you fuel to tackle the year because we're gonna have a better year next year than we had this year. And I don't, I'm not having a great year if I compare it to maybe like three years ago, but it's been a pretty damn good year. So the idea that next year could be even better than this one, to me, that's exciting. It won't be though, if I show up January 1 and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get to work now, it'll be the same old song and dance. So um, do something different, y'all. Plan some parties and let's party our way to success. Sound good?